Okay, so the third question that our, um, our group received in response to the task is on screen now. And we had to look at whether we would expect the elasticity of demand for Arabica, a variety of coffee, to be the same as the elasticity of demand for coffee in general. Yes or no, um, and why? So demand for a good can be inelastic or elastic. Coffee as an industry has an inelastic demand. And this means that when there's a change in price, there's not going to be a proportional change in the, um, in the demand for that good. Elastic demand is the opposite. And that means that when there is a change in price, you will see a large change in demand for that good. Now, this can be illustrated by our slide number two, which is on screen now. And also slide three. Now, if we get back to the question that was posed, is the demand elasticity the same or different? I believe that the demand for Arabica would be elastic in comparison to coffee, which is inelastic. And there's a few reasons why I believe this to be so. So substitutions, there's substitutions that exist. Um, within the category, there's positive price cross elasticity. And also, I'm going to use necessity versus luxury to give some more weight to my argument as well. Now, as the article shows, and as I mentioned, the demand for coffee is inelastic. However, the article does not distinguish between different varieties of coffee. It's reporting on an industry as a whole, and Arabica is a variety of coffee, so it's a product within, within an industry, and there's many other varieties within that industry as well. So this is one of the reasons why I believe the demand for Arabica would be elastic because with other varieties being available, they could be substitutes for this particular variety. So for argument's sake, there's a worldwide shortage of Arabica beans and the price of Arabica um, increased dramatically. You, know, you may see a shift away from this particular variety to one that was cheaper. Robusta, for example, could be easily substituted for um, Arabica. So when, when there's a lot of um, options available to people, they tend to, they tend to only pay the price that they want to. And therefore, if there was a substitute available that was cheaper, they're probably going to forego the more expensive one for the substitute. And this is one factor which creates elastic demand. So the specific product may um, have elastic demand. However, the industry has inelastic demand because there are few, if any, substitutes for, um, for coffee. And as Aaron mentioned previously, there's no real substitutes for coffee because tea just is not the same. So the lack of substitutions creates that inelastic demand, which I think you know coffee generally has, no substitutes for it. When we have a look at the consumer category as a whole, though, we've generally got um, different varieties in there which can be classed as premium and not so premium. So you know the not so premium variety of coffee could be instant for argument's sake, whereas Arabica could be seen as the premium variety of the coffee category. And I'd like to make the argument that as it's the premium variety, it could be classed as a luxury good. Now, if we have a look at other consumer categories, we've got you know premium, premium varieties in those. For example, food, um, shoes, clothing is another one as well. So when um, well, income is good, people are more willing to buy those luxury products. They're willing to, to fork out the, the extra for those premium products. However, when economic conditions worsen, um, they're still going to need to buy coffee because that's a necessity. They're still going to need to buy clothes. They're definitely a necessity. Um, but they will tend to move towards those non-premium products, move away from those luxury products. And we've probably most recently seen this um, in China with the rise of the middle class over there. So luxury brands such as Prada had a huge surge in sales with the increase in wealth. We've also, there's also been the same story for Australian wine and also red meat because they're viewed as, as luxury products as well. However, um, you know, if they see a contraction in their economy, you will see that these items will be the first to decrease in demand. 
and that definitely happened in 2015. Um, if you have a go back and have a look at Prada's sales during that year, um, there was definitely a, a decrease in demand for those luxury goods. So finally, with the numerous varieties of coffee that are available, positive price cross elasticity uh, would exist within the coffee category. So this measures the responsiveness of the quantity demanded for a good to a change in price of another good. So if we go back to our example, we've got um, Arabica, which we're looking at, and we've said that there are um, a few substitutes for that particular variety. So if the price rose for the Arabica variety and demand for, say, Robusta may increase if this was the less expensive option in comparison. However, so, I mean, it's going to be it's very easy to uh, switch coffee varieties. However, I don't believe that it's easy to switch from coffee to tea, which, you know, is an argument that's out there because they're very different. Um, it's definitely not the same. Besides both of them being um, hot liquid beverages, I think that's where the similarity ends. Therefore, I don't believe that coffee generally would have a close substitute, whereas coffee varieties have many substitutes. And that's, they're my arguments for, um, for saying that while coffee is, um, has a inelastic demand, I believe that Arabica would have an elastic demand. Now, as we are all aware, all economics questions um, can be quite subjective. You may be a fine coffee lover and believe that there's no substitute for the Arabica variety. However, I've drawn these conclusions, you know, on my views of the subject and my attitude towards the particular good that we were looking at. You know, I, I do love a good coffee and I think that it is a necessity. And I will embrace having coffee whenever I can. Tomorrow is going to be definitely one of those days. But I just hope that I have um, given you enough reasons as to why I believe that the um, demand for Arabica would be elastic in comparison to the demand for coffee generally, which is inelastic.